it's a beautiful day in the neighbor pool. A beautiful day to be Deadpool. It's story time. Story time! <sighs> we got any fans of Mr. Rogers out there today? Wow, all right. I'm a pretty big fan of Captain America myself. Are you all ready for story time? Yeah. High five, kid. Well, I'm glad you guys are ready for story time because I certainly have a story to tell. Gosh, I love to talk. Today's story is a beloved bedtime classic and pulled straight from the public domain so we can't be sued. It's Little Red Deadpool. You guys don't have to fight the urge to clap. You can applause if you want. Oh, wow. That was so genuine and unprompted. Thank you for that. Wow, let me put on my little 4K reading glasses. Now I can see all of your beautiful, shining, shimmering, splendid faces. All right. Well, that doesn't work. Okay, no matter. It's not like we have a Disney budget or anything. All right. Look at these adorable pictures, by the way. Look how cute Dogpool is. Adorable, right? Oh, thank you for clapping. I scribbled these myself. Once upon a time. You know what? It just feels wrong when I'm doing it with myself. Why don't we all say it together, shall we? One, two, three. Once upon a time. See, isn't that so much more fun and interactive when we're all in this together? For those of you that didn't participate, get your head in the game! <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Mm -hmm. Anyway, upon that time, once, Little Red Deadpool set out to bring her sickly grandmama a delicious basket of churros. You see, Little Red's grandma lived alone. Not in a nice, clean, assisted living facility like where most mimas are forced to live in against their will, no. Little Red's grandma lived alone in a creepy cottage in the middle of an even creepier, desolate forest because Cranny lived life on the edge. Oh, this seems dangerous, thought Little Red to herself. So naturally she went into the forest anyway so that children could learn from her mistakes for hundreds of years. A real after-school special kind of cautionary tale. Well, anyway, Little Red skipped majestically throughout the forest, right past some exposition, before finally arriving at Grandmama's cottage. When she opened the door, she saw her grandmother lying down on a nice four-poster bleach mahogany bed. Grandma, I brought you a delicious basket of churros. Grandma was looking pretty weird, freakish even, and it wasn't because of the weight loss drugs. No, it wasn't because of that. It was because Little Red's grandma was actually the big, bad, wolfy in disguise. Ooh. Now that guy flinched. Now, I saw you flinch, sir, in all due respect. All right. Oh, Grandmama, what blue eye contact do you have? Uh, the cannon. Oh, and Grandma, what a retro comic accurate costume you finally have. Shut up, bub. Uh, and Grandma, what big claws you have. Are those vibranium? No. They're on a manium. Shing! Uh, wait a minute! Grandma's not Australian! Uh -huh. <laughs> Little Red broke off a piece of churro, dropped her basket, whipped off her cloak, took a bite of that delicious churro, and then brought down her katanas in an X-shaped formation. Not as an Easter egg, but more just a stylistic choice. <laughs> Bring it on, Peanut! They actually leaped at each other. Huge fight. It was awesome. They smashed through that rich mahogany bed, but no one got a splinter. Uh, claws and katanas tore through the mattress, and there was CGI hay everywhere. <laughs> Which, as you can imagine, is like 350,000 times more expensive than regular hay, but this is Disney. We like to go all out here. Speaking of going all out, once both fighters were finally fatigued from the battle's mutually incredible climax, they both slumped down to the ground, exhausted. 
churro? asked Little Red, now in her regular voice, because falsettos are hard, and quite honestly, I'm getting a little lightheaded. <laughs> sure, he replied. And so they shared that churro. In fact, they shared it Lady in the Tramp style, actually. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Before gazing around at all the destruction and CGI straw left in their wake. Say, Wolvie, I bet we could fix this place up nice. I think Grammy would be willing to sell. Actually, um, where is Grandmama anyway? She's, uh, on vacation. Huh. Okay, well, um, that's not ominous or foreboding in any way. In fact, I trust you fully. We should be roommates. Yeah. And so they were roommates. Little Red was the top bunk, and Wolvie was obviously the bottom. And they lived happily ever after the end. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. And the moral of that story, children, is pretty obvious, actually. It's spend more time with your grandma. Seriously, you should really be able to recognize the difference between your own old, decrepit grandmother and some huge jacked man. <laughs> A huge jackman, if you will. Oh, stop it, please stop it. Well, anyway, I should be off. I've got another show in about 56 and a half minutes, and I gotta go check my DMs. That stands for Deadpool Messages. Patent pending. Thank you all for coming to another illustrious story time with your new favorite Disney princess, Deadpool. Woo!